Right, this is the second simulation. So we're gonna simulate a moon and satellite. So we're gonna explore the two case. The first one, we're gonna make a satellite uh, orbit the moon, uh, but it's gonna uh, face the always the same side to the moon. The other one will have the satellite will spin itself while it's uh, orbiting the moon as well too. So let me start with the first case. Start. So this is the case. Uh, satellite will orbit the moon, but facing always same side. Start with the asteroid orbit satellite. Well, as you can see, um, they overlap each other. It's hard to see. So let me turn on all these axes. Line one of satellite. Line one. Orbit. I'm gonna hide the uh, asteroid so that I can start move. So many plate. So X direction of the satellite. So if I put it back, it should be there. So constraint coincidence two axis are the coincident between plane x y plane in this case both of them same direction same thing coincident between axis axis plane plane of this orbit dummy file. So if I update it, positions, then I'm going to fix the asteroid here. So the assembly is ready, so we're going to move on to the kinematics. Alright, so let's move on to Kinematics. All right, so we're gonna start uh, creating join. In this case, we're gonna have a rebel joint for uh, this moon and this dummy file, and we're gonna add the joint uh, between satellite and dummy, dummy file too. Again, depending on how you create a join, the behavior will be totally different. So let's start. So I'm gonna fix the part first. Then it, uh, create a new mechanism. Then fix it. So now you can see this S31, this file is fixed. So I can add the constraint joint. So in this case, I'm gonna make this one rotating based on this axis. So you click regular joints. Requirement is four, line one, line two, which is there supposed to overlap, and plane one, plane two. This two plane over this two part will be aligned, and there will be the, as you can see here in this case, um, perpendicular or normal each other so you can make it actual ro rotations so line one let me hide this temporary line one will be the axis of this asteroid line two will be I go to hidden place this the red one Later. 
and plane one will be xy plane arm of asteroid. And plane two will be xy plane of this dummy one. It looks like all be one xy plane already selected. So I'm going to select xy plane of asteroid. I don't say if I say OK. I will have a joint, a regular joint being created. So I can make this is rotated. Now to make the case simple, I'm gonna make another joint between center line and this one. But in this case, I don't need to worry about it. to make its face always the same direction. Uh, I'm gonna just simply fix it. So the joint is we call it rigid joint. So making the two part glue down each other so there's no movement allowed so rigid so this dummy file and the cell right there so now we'll be able to simulate it but we still have one degree of freedom so we need to take control over this one degree of freedom as a command before we simulate with the command. So I'm going to double click. So and then it's going to be angle driven. So from the 0 degree to 360 degree. Again, you see the directions. It's kind of showing the preview. If you don't like the direction is rotating, you can again, by simply click the blue arrow, you're going to be able to reverse the directions. So, okay. Then you will see a window pop up because we took that single degree of freedom of variable as our command, this one can be simulated. So if you click the simulation, make change one, then as a, we rotate it, so in this degree, which was we uh, put into our rigid joint when we take the degree of freedom, then we'll be able to insert the antibody into the 100 scene. We can, in this case, we can make it as a continuous loop, not back and forth, continuous loop, then see if it's rotating. As you can see, the satellite is facing exactly the same direction or always, because we made this one as a rigid joint. Alright. So, then how do you control the speed? Well, that's where the law is kicks in. So I'm going to add the law by selecting the mechanism. And we have two parameters available. There's angle, of course, in this case, because we are rotating. So this angle will be modified with the time we have it, which is kinematics time. So in this case, let's say that uh, 360 degree of rotation will be done within one second. Then uh, saying that will be the dimension will be matched by adding kinematic time there. So time time will be subsidized and only 360 degree, so it's an angle. So those dimensions match. Good. And you can see the formula being added. In. Okay. So now, to apply this uh, formula into simulation, we have to change the simulation method from command to law. Then you will be able to simulate with the speed that you are looking for. Then to track the position of speed and acceleration, you can add the sensor uh, into the moving part usually, so that you can uh, get the data by turning on this sensor. So the sensor is uh, named as a speed and acceleration. Uh, in this case, um, reference product will be, of course, the asteroid here, stationary one. Then point over selection, that's where you want to put the sensor. So in this case, let me put the tip far away one. And in this case, I'm going to rely on main axis of asteroid that we already have. So once you have a law and speed sensors, then you can again simulate with the law. 
then you're going to activate the sensor. Then there's a, a number of the parameters you can actually uh, track as a sensor. So as an example, let's say I want to track the x direction amount of uh, location of in, in terms of x, let's say that. Then I'm going to check x linear speed or x accelerations. Then also you can track the how many seconds you want to track. Do you remember we had a 360 degree within one second. So if I say 10, then it's going to make a 10 times rotation. So Okay, let's see, 10 times. In this case, steps, again, how many data points would you like to take? So in this case, I will just stay with the 200. But if you're looking for the more smaller time frame, then you can increase the number of steps so that you can track more data. So of course, the instantaneous value check, you see what, what the, the old parameters that you're looking for is there. Go to history. Just in case, clean out all dummy file, uh, data, then simulate it. One, two, three. Okay, looks like a 10 times rotation done. Then the order value for the uh, X locations and X speed acceleration will be there. So again, remember this is only x direction, definitely is not going to be constant continually. So if you want to look at this graph, by clicking, you can see it. Here is a red showing the acceleration in terms of again x direction, and green is in terms of speed, and yellow as it, uh, for the in terms of x positions, it's tracking. So now let's move on to the case two. We saw the satellite was station, uh, facing the same side always as it rotated, but if we want to make the satellite rotate itself, so we need to separate the joint in this case. So let me close all we have. So rigid joint, again, this is not what we are looking for. So I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to delete the simulation. So revolution is still there. So again, I got to remove, uh, rid of this settle, the rigid joint we have. So now we're going to have independent the revolution joint. So I'm going to have, again, double joint, the same thing, axis, always start with a smaller one, move easier, and another axis, as a line 2, then axis the xy plane of satellite, then xy plane of your dummy one. which is orbit. So I got satellite line, the axis, I got satellite xy plane, I got the, this orbit, the dummy axis, the blue one I had, and I had xy plane. Okay. So now, uh, do you remember when we went to the first Regular joint, we are we made this was angle driven, so we were rotating. So now, as you can see, the rotation of this satellite is totally independent from its orbiting around the moon too. So, what you can do is, you can actually take this another degree of freedom as in your command. So actually, you can have more than one command in your simulation which can be also independently added to from uh, the formula as well too. So I'm going to make this one, then I can make angle driven, then rotation will be again 0 degree to 360 degree, say OK. Then now the mechanism can be simulated. So again, both level of joint, we took 
that degree of freedom of, of each one as under our command. So this one, we have command 1, this one, we have command 2, both of them made us perfect 360 degree of rotation. So now, the satellite need to have its own formula, own speed, definitely you want to make it maybe faster than this orbiting speed. Then in that case, we're going to add out another formula. Then go to mechanism 1. Then here we go. The first one it was already had its own uh, formula, but the other was not yet. So we're going to start adding new, new uh, formula. So let's say that it's going to be two times faster than this orbiting speed. So as it rotate orbiting once, let's say you want to spin around at least two times. So how about ten times? Okay, let's make the satellite uh, rotate ten times uh, while it's orbiting one times. So in that case, double click the, your angular variable. Again, 10 times of 360 degree multiplied by one second. Okay. That, again, that was 360 divided by one second was the overall the time. Then again, to match the dimensions, I'm updating kinematics time. Okay, so now the satellite got the own formula. So if I go to simulation with the law, again be careful in this case simulation with the law because we're gonna apply this to well we are using same sensor though. Same sensors. Okay, in 10 seconds, so orbiting 10 times. So let's see what hap let's see what happened. So same thing, x vertex and x linear speed, x linear acceleration. Let's see what's the different. Okay, same values there. History, just in case, clean out. Then if I start rotating, again, it should rotate. Also, the satellite cell should rotate it based on axis. Here we go. So, oh, I need to rewind. I'm sorry. Rewind. Okay, now time to play. It probably is too fast. It's hard to see how satellite is rotating. Okay, so in that case, let's clean out, rewind, and Let's go back to our command, our formula, okay, under the simulation. Instead of a 10 seconds, let's change it to only 1 second. That means one perfect orbit. Then within that, let's see how much, how this uh, satellite behave. So activate sensor. Same thing should be already on. Let's clean up. Okay, here is a go. So I'm gonna simulate only one orbit. And now you can see the satellite is spinning itself. So I think we use the 10 times. So while it's orbiting one times, the satellite is going to be rotated, rotate 10 times. So again, if you look at the graphics, now you can see in X direction wise. Uh, how this acceleration change and how speed changes, how the X location changes, you can see it. Because it is one side as it rotates itself and orbiting based on your moon, you can see the different PA comes out. Everything looks good. Then you can close. And under the uh, Simulation actually, if you want to really make it much easier to look at later on, actually, you can uh, once you simulate it, you can make it as a uh, replay buttons as well, too. So you can control with the command, and, and as you run, so next example, okay, 
Okay, so once it is done, actually you can compile it. Once you compile it, you will have uh, at the bottom of a simulation, you will have replay button. So you don't have to go through the old calculation. Again, you, you can simply watch the like movie in that case. So I will demonstrate one more time in the classroom.